Hello everybody, welcome to the next game in the 1969 National League pennant chase for inside pitch. We are now at September the 16th and we are at Candlestick Park for the game between the Atlanta Braves and the San Francisco Giants. Starting pitchers for today's game, Ron Reed for the Braves and Juan Marshall for the Giants. Giants won this game in real life two to nothing. Look at the updated standings. The Cubs and the Mets in a virtual tie for first place in the National League East. In the West, the Giants lead Cincinnati by two, LA by three, and Atlanta by four and a half. So a must, almost a must win for Atlanta. The fact that they lose this game, I may just take them off of the, uh, you know, tracking this because they may just be totally out of it. But I guess I'll keep them in there. If they stay within six games, I guess I'll keep them there. But, you know, they just can't afford to start losing these games. All right, let's look at the starting lineups for both teams as we bring the score sheet into play. For the Braves, we have Felipe Alou in center, Felix Mian at second, Hank Aaron in right, Rico Cardi in left, Orlando Cepeda at first, Cleet Boyer at third, Bob Didier catching, Gil Garrido at short, and Ron Reed pitching. For the Giants, Tito Fuentes at third, Ron Hunt at second, Willie Mays in center, Willie McCovey at first, Bobby Bonds in right, Ken Henderson in left, Jack Hyatt doing the catching, Hal Lanier, and Juan Marichal. Okay, so let's do a final check here to make sure everything can be seen fairly clearly. I think it can. So it looks like we have plenty of room. All right, let's move this over just a touch. Okay, leadoff man for the Braves will be Philippe or Felipe Alou. Everything looks good through the phone, so I'll take a seat and we will get ready to get going here on the September the 16th game. We're almost halfway through. We started on September 1st, so this is pretty much the halfway mark. Still a lot of baseball to be played and still a lot of teams in it, in the West particularly. In the East, it's pretty much a two-team bonanza to the finish. All right, don't forget the ticker will be after this game as well for the remaining games on the schedule for September the 16th. It's Juan Marichal delivering 5-3. That is a range play at Candlestick for Felipe Alou. Candlestick 5-5. Five, five. That is a ground ball to second. Range of the second baseman for San Francisco and that would be Mr. Hunt. He is a three. And he gets to it. So good play. For Ron Hunt, he makes the play. One down. That will send us to Felix Mian. 5-5. Five, five. That's a blank. We go to Mian's card. 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five is a fly to center. Say hey. Willie Mays makes the catch. Two down. And here is Hank Aaron. 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four is a strikeout chance. 5 is too much. That's a, that's a 7, so it won't, won't make it. Hank gets the swing. 2-3. And a split chance against a right-hander. That's a single. Base hit for Hank Aaron. His attempt is a two. Let's see if he can try to get a jump. He does not. So he will stand pat for Rico Cardi. Marshall with the high leg kick and the pitch. 4-1. Walk chance to a lefty. Cardi is a righty. So we go to Cardi's card. 4-4. Four, four. Ground ball to second. And Hunt makes the play again. Innings over. So a lone single by Hank Aaron. But that's it for the, the Giants. They get nothing else. I'm sorry, for the Braves, they get nothing else. It's Atlanta nothing, and the Giants coming to bat. Ron Reed, the pitcher. We'll be facing Tito Fuentes, third baseman. Lead it off, followed by Hunt and Mays. Reed, 5-3 is a blank. We go to Fuentes. 6-1, ground ball to first. Easy play there for Mr. Zapata. One down. That will bring up Ron Hunt, Mr. Hit-by-Pitch. You notice he has a 32 on his hit-by-pitch rating. Ron Reed, 2-6, strikeout chance. Too high, not going to get him. Hunt, 3-4. Ground ball to first, and again, Cepeda makes the play. Two easy ground balls to first. Two down for Willie Mays. 3-3, three, three, strikeout plus, and he got him. Innings over. Nothing doing for the Giants. Easy inning for Ron Reed. We go to the second. No score. And these games have been barn burners lately, and they've been low scoring. 
Last two games have gone 14 and 13 innings respectively. So I'm hoping to get this done in nine. That would be nice. I like a nice tight close game done in nine minutes and about, or, or nine innings and about 45 minute video. That would be nice. But you can't always get what you want. But sometimes you get what you need, as some band once sang. 6-6 six, six, strikeout chance. That's a three. He is gone. Cepeda out of there. Here's Cleet Boyer. 1-2 strikeout chance again. That's an 11. And he will get him. That's an 11. So he struck him out. Looked like it was kind of balancing between 11 and 20, but I do believe the 11 was where it was at. So that's two down for Bob Didier. 1-5. He's not tired, so there's no single. Didier gets to swing. 4-5. He's going to pop it up to first. McCovey right there. Easy 1-2-3 inning for, for Marichal. We go to the bottom of the second. Still nothing doing. And stretch. Willie McCovey steps to the plate. He and his 45 home runs. Ron Reed, 3-4. That's a potential walk. 12 will be a good walk. So McCovey draws the leadoff base on balls. He has no attempt, so he will not try to go anywhere. No strategy roll because there's no pickoff chances. Bobby Bonds, 2-1. Blank on Reed. We go to Bonds' card. 3-6. That's a star 4. Ground ball to third. They were halfway, so that makes his double play rating a 3. The pivot at second, Mion is a minus one, so that drops him back down to a two. So one to two, it's a double play. It is double play, they get him. Round the horn, five, four, three. Bobby Bonds, even with that speed, hits into a double play. Two down for Ken Henderson. One four on Reed. Henderson's a switch hitter by the left, so that is a blank. Go to Henderson to finish. 1-1, one, one. that's a star one, ground ball to second, easy play for Mion. And nothing doing for the Giants. We go to the third, no score. Here at Candlestick. And Gil Garrido to lead things off. Short stop. That's a 3-3, three, three. we're going to Candlestick Park. 3-5, ground ball to first. And easy play for McCovey. One down, that'll bring up the pitcher, Ron Reed. And Ron Reed, so-so hitter, 125 for a pitcher. I guess he's about average. Marshall, 6'4", strikeout, doesn't matter. He got him. Two down. Most pitchers aren't going to survive that strikeout roll. Here's Felipe Alou. 5'1", he's a righty, so the star line against the lefty is a, actually a blank. Go to Alou. 2-6, fly to left. Anderson puts it away, and the inning is over. We go to the bottom of the third. Still nothing across the board on either side. Ron Reed back out. We'll be facing the catcher, Jack Hyatt, followed by Lanier and Marischal. Reed to Hyatt. 5-4 is a blank. We go to Hyatt's card. 6-1, star two is a ground ball to short. Easy play for Garrido, one down. Here's Hal Lanier. Reed, 1-5, double question mark against a righty, 1-9 is an automatic out, that's a 7. So he gets the automatic out, and it's the automatic out is a ground ball to third. Cleet Boyer handles it, no problem, 2 down, and now Marshall the pitcher. 3-6, that's a range play, so we go to Marshall's card for a range check. 4-3, that's a ground ball to the pitcher. Reed is a 4 for his range. And he can't get it. It's going to be a single. How about that? You're not going to get a double on a failed range play that way. It's just a single. But Marshall gets the first hit of the game uh, for the Giants, and it comes on a range play as Ron Reed, even though he has a four, he could not get to that. So no strategy roll. Drive on. 2-5. Strikeout chance. And Mr. Fuentes is out of there. Inning's over. Three are in the books at Candlestick with nothing doing. For either side, both teams only have one hit apiece. Nobody's gotten to second base successfully yet. Here is Felix Mian. 3-1 strikeout chance. 11, way too high for that. 1-1, one, one, star four is a ground ball to third. Easy play for Fuentes. One down. Here's Hank Hammer and Hank. 4-1. 
Would be a walk against the lefty, Hank's a righty, so it's a blank, Hank gets the swing. 1-4, grounder to first, McCovey's got it, two down. For Rico Cardi, 4-3, four, 4-3's three. Four, a bl uh, blank, so we go on to Cardi. 4-2, fly to right, that's going to end the inning, so both pitchers having their way with these lineups so far. They're just strolling through, through the order without much stress. Is Ron Hunt, Ron Reed to Ron Hunt, a couple of Rons going at it. 5-6, that's a walk chance, and he will draw the leadoff walk. So that might get something going for the Giants as we're heading to the middle of the order. He's got an attempt of one. Let's see if anything happens. And it is a one, so he will get a steal. He's a 16, plus two there makes him an 18. Didier's a plus one, makes him a 19. Anything other than a 20, and he's safe. And he's in there, stolen base for Ron Hunt. So Ron Hunt steals second base. He's in scoring position for Willie Mays with nobody out. 1-1, one, one, strikeout chance, and say, hey, he's out of here. One down. It's going to bring up McCovey. 3-5, and that's the ballpark card going to Candlestick. McCovey's got a chance for some home runs here. 2-6, and that's a home run to the opposite field. That's a 9, that's a 20. It doesn't matter. It's gone. Home run, Willie McCovey. Stretch with the blast to the opposite field. And the Giants now take a 2-0 lead, and they're looking to bury the Braves and take them out of contention. The Braves lose this game. They'll drop to 5.5 back, and it's not looking good if they do that. Here's Bobby Bonds. 5-4. Five, 5-4 four. Five, four is a blank. We go to Bonds' card. 4-5. Four, 4-5 five. Four, five is a fly to left. Two down. That'll bring up Ken Henderson, the left fielder. Ken Henderson. Reed, 3-3, three, three. strikeout plus for righty, but Henderson's a switch, which means he's batting left, so it's a blank. Go to Henderson, 2-5, fly to center, ends the inning. But a two-run homer for McCovey, and at the end of four, it's Giants 2, Braves nothing. We go to the fifth. They've given Marischal a 2-0 lead to protect. And if you look at the season he had in 69, he was 21-11 with a 2-10 ERA. Pretty good chance he'll protect it. 5-4. That's a possible error on a ground ball for Cepeda. 3-3. Three, three, that's a grounder to short. That's an 8. The shortstop error rating Lanier is a 7. So he will, he will barely make the play. But he does. Kind of bobbled it, but got over there just in time to beat Cepeda for out number 1. Cleet Boyer. 3-5. That's a hit by pitch chance. He's a 5. Marshall's a minus 2. That's a 3. That's a 13, so too high. Go to Boyer. 5, 4, question mark, 8 against a right-hander. Needs a 4 or less to get a hit. That's a 5. He just misses it. So it's just going to be a fly ball to center field. Hauled in out there by Willie Mays. So Boyer almost got an extra base hit, but not quite. Didier. 3, 4. That's a range play. 4, 1. Ground ball to short. Looking at the range of Lanier. He is a 5. And Lanier handles that one easily to end the inning. So nothing doing there. We go to the bottom of the fifth. And Jack Hyatt, the batter. 1-2. One, 1-2 two. One, two is the ballpark card. We're going to Candlestick for Hyatt. 3-3. Three, three. That is a star three, which is a ground ball to first. So Peta makes the play easily. One away. Going to bring up Lanier. Reed, 2-5, strikeout chance, 16, too much. Lanier, 1-1, one, one, lines it right to me on at second for out number two. That brings up Marischal, who actually got a single on a failed range check his first time, 3-4. This time he's got a chance at a walk, but 13 is way too high for that. So Marischal, 5-6, he's going to ground it to short. And Garrido takes care of it. We go to the sixth. Still 2 nothing favor of the Giants. As they are looking to squash the Braves and get some distance between themselves and the Reds. The Reds actually on the ticker uh, will be playing a doubleheader against the Dodgers. So that can be huge in the ticker. 
I only wrote down, only typed in one game, but I looked it up. They're actually playing two games, so I missed one of the games for some reason. But they do have a doubleheader against the Dodgers today in L.A., so we'll see what the ticker says about that. Garrido, 1-5. That's not tired, so we skip it. Garrido, 1-6, ground ball to third. One down, and that's going to bring up Ron Reed. And I guess you're going to still let him hit. 6-5, ballpark card. We're going to Candlestick. 5-2, that's a single plus. His base run rating is a three. The right fielder is Bonds. He's a zero. So a one to three, he will turn this into a double. Four, five, he holds. Six, he's going to be out. He makes the double out of it. So Ron Reed hustles. How about that for some hustle? Pitcher Ron Reed doubles. Only the second hit of the game for the Braves. We'll roll the strategy roll because there's a chance of a pickoff, and there is none. Felipe Alou, the batter. 5-1, and Starline against the lefty, but he's a righty, so we skip it. Go to Alou, 3-3, fly to center field, and that's out number two. Ron Reed cannot go to third. His base run rating is a three, and you lose three on the fly ball to center field. Makes him a zero, and since Bonds has, I'm sorry, since uh, Mays has a zero arm, it's a zero, and they can't go anywhere. So here's Mion. We roll, we'll go ahead and roll the strategy. Nothing happening. Marshall to Mion, 6-2, possible error on a throw. Go to Mion, 3-6. That is a single to third base against a right-hander. That's a four. The third baseman, Fuentes, is a 15, so that is going to be an error. So it's a single, and that will put Reed to third base on that single. But then he will come around and score on the E5. So as Fuentes is bobbling it, he comes in to score, and Mion will take second base on the E5. E5, second base. And he's got an attempt of, well, he's on second base, so he's not going to steal, but we'll roll, we'll roll the strategy. Nothing happening. So Mion's at second base. He is the tying run. Here's Hank Aaron. Marshall, 4-6, strikeout chance, 15's too much. Go to Aaron, 1-6, and he flies to center to end the inning. But the run comes in, and it cuts the lead to 2-1. to one. So maybe there's faint hopes for Atlanta yet. 2-1, to one. here's Tito Fuentes. 1-2, ballpark card, going back to Candlestick. 3-3, three, three. it's a star 3, which is a ground ball to first. Handled by Cepeda, one down. It's going to bring up Ron Hunt. 2-3. Two, 2-3, three. Two, three, he's not tired, so there's no single there. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Ground ball to third. Two down. Yeah, he's faced 20 batters now. He can face 29, so he's nowhere near tired. Here's Willie Mays. 5-2. Possible error on a grounder. May 6-6 six, six is a grounder to short. Garrido's error rating is a 7. That's a 7. It is an error. E6. So now both teams have committed an error. That's a one base error because there's no throw involved. He's a attempt of one. And he cannot get the jump. So it leaves it up to Willie McCovey. He homered his last time up. 1-6, strikeout chance too much. We go to McCovey. 6-3, and he's going to do it again. 6-3, split chance. That's a straight-up home run to right field. Willie McCovey has done it again. They might want to consider start walking him. Might want to think about it. But that's two unearned runs because of that error on the shortstop. Corrido opens the door, and now the Giants get two extra runs to take a 4-1 lead. And talk about taking the wind out of your sails. I think that just about did it for the Braves. Ooh, that one almost flipped the coop, but it came back in. 5-3, and that is a blank. So we go to Bobby Bonds' card. 6-6, six, six, he's going to pop it up to third, inning over. But damage done. The two-run homer by McCovey. He's got all four runs. Two two-run homers that produced the four runs for the Giants. We go to seventh. It's 4-1 to one, San Francisco. And that'll bring up Rico Cardi. 3-4. That's a range play. So we go to Rico. 
2 1. Ground ball to short. The range of Lanier is a 5. And he's able to make the play. One down for Orlando Cepeda. 5 1. Star line against the lefty, but against the righty, it is blank. Cepeda, 3 2. Against the right hander, that's a split chance. That's a double to left field for Orlando Cepeda. So maybe the Braves have something cooking. I don't know. We're getting near the bottom of the order. Here's Cleet Boyer. Strategy roll. No 20, so nothing's happening. Marshall, 2-1. Strikeout plus versus a lefty, but Boyer's a righty, so it's just a blank. Boyer, 4-3. Line drive to third base. This could be a double play. Two down, and when you line it to third... With a runner on second base and a liner goes to third, there is actually no chance of a double play according to this. According to the chart, if a runner is on second base, I'm sorry, runs on second base and a liner to third, there is a chance. I'm sorry. Liner went to third and runs on second, so you got to have a two. I was looking at the wrong way. you got to have a two. A two is a double play. Anything else, he gets back. And he gets back, but just barely. So Cepeda just gets back. And I'll bring up Didier. Nothing on the strategy roll. Marshall, 6-5. That's the ballpark card. Didier at Candlestick, 3-1. a star 5. Fly to left. Innings over. So the double goes for naught. Seventh inning stretch here at Candlestick. It's all Marshall and McCovey as they lead it 4-1. to one. Ron Reed still staying in there against Ken Henderson. 5-1, strikeout chance, Henderson too much. Go to Henderson, 6-5, star 4, fly to, or ground ball to third, rather. One down for Jack Hyatt. 4-6, uh, that's a wild pitch, so it's just no pitch. 2-3, two, 2-3 three. Two, three is a single. If he's tired, he's not tired. Go to Hyatt, 5-3, and that's a single to pass short on the split chance. That's a single for Mr. Hyatt. He has no attempt. Here's Hal Lanier. 5-3 is a blank. We go to Lanier's card. 6-3, star 3. Ground ball to first. Could be a double play. He's a 2. The pivot at short is Garrido. He's a minus 1, so that drops him to a 2. So 1-2, to two, it's a double play. It's not. It's a 4. Base running rating of Hyatt is a 2, so he will be forced to at second base since his base running rating could not exceed the 1d6 roll. It will be a 3-6 fielder's choice. Two down for Juan Marichal. 6-3 strikeout chance and Marichal is out of there. So that's going to be it for Ron Reed. He goes seven innings. Gives up the four runs. Only two of them were earned. But he's looking to be saddled with a loss unless the Braves can find some eighth and ninth inning magic as he is set to bat second this inning. So he's definitely coming out for a pinch hitter. And grabbing a bat off the bench is left-handed hitting Mike Lum. So Lum will be on to pinch hit for Reed. But first it's Garrido. And then we have Lum and company. And actually, you wonder if they might start bringing in some pinch hitters for their weaker hitters. So they're going to pull Garrido because they're down 4-1. to one. They need offense. They're going to pull Garrido. And they're going to go to Bob Aspermonte to pinch hit for Garrido. And, of course, Aspermonte can stay in the game to play shortstop. And then we'll figure out who the pitcher is going to be in the bottom of the eighth. But right now it is Bob Aspermonte. And when he comes in at short, he's a 1-18 and a 0, so not very good, but... 253 is better than what uh, Garrido was hitting, so they're going to take a chance. Marshall, 2-3, strikeout chance, 6, got him. So Aspermonte strikes out in the pinch. Here's Mike Lum, pinch hit for Reed. Lum, a 268 hitter and 168 at bats. Against Marshall, 3-6, strikeout chance, 16 too much. Go to Lum, 1-1, one, one, single to right field for Mike Lum. One out single for Mike Lum. So he's aboard. Roll the strategy roll for a potential pickoff. There is nothing. Here's Felipe Alou, Felipe Alou. 
6-5 ballpark card. We're going to Candlestick. 3-4. That's a star 2, which is a fly to center field for out number 2. 2 down for Felix Mian. Nothing on the strategy roll. 3-1. Strikeout chance. 7's too much. Go to Mian. 5-2. Question mark 7 against a right-hander. It's only a 4. That's an 18. It's definitely going to be a fly out to left field to end the inning. It's a Marischal. Getting it done. Eight innings of solid pitching. So now the Braves need a new pitcher to replace Ron Reed. And let's see who they want to go to. The Giants have the top of the order. Fuentes, Hunt, and, and Mays. So switch hitter and two right-handers. So they're going to go to a righty out of the bullpen. I do believe it will be Gary Niebauer. Gary Niebauer. And he does have the special K, so I got to keep an eye for that. Gary Niebauer is on. Try to keep the score right where it is. Facing the top of the order, here's Fuentes. 3 3, that's a star line because he's a switch hitter. That's a star line. And that's a four, which is a fly to left. One down. So there's one away, and that's going to send up Ron Hunt. 3-1 range play. Hunt, 1-6. Star five, that's a fly to center. So the fly to center, center fielder is Alou. He's only a two. But he gets it anyway. He was able to get to it, so that's two down. And that's going to bring up Willie Mays. 3-6, walk plus, and he will draw the base on balls. Two out walk to Mays. He has attempt of one, but he's got a hold of minus one, so no attempt. There is a pickoff chance, so we'll see. There's no 20, so no pickoff. And now, what do you do with McCovey? He's, he's homer twice. <laughs> what do you do with McCovey? He's homer twice, both against Ron Reed. Um... He's got straight home run chances again against righties here. Against lefties, he can still get a 20, and you can get some home runs up here. So I guess you're just going to have to go ahead and just pitch to him. Roll the strat. That was a 20, so chance of a pickoff. Maybe they can pick Mays off first, and they won't have to pitch to McCovey. A 1-3, to three, it's a pickoff. It's a 2. They picked off Willie Mays, so they don't have to pitch to McCovey. That's one way to get out of it. How about that? Say, hey, they pick off Willie Mays. I don't know what Willie was thinking, but he got picked off. And we go to the ninth. Last chance for the Braves. Marischal has faced 29 batters. He can face 31, so he's going to be right on the edge of his fatigue. So with that in mind, the Giants do have the bullpen loosening with their closer, Frank Lindsay, who had 11 saves on the season. So he is loosening in the Giants' bullpen. But right now, it is Hank Aaron against Juan Marichal. And as RJL would say, will we see some ninth inning magic? 5-2. Five, 5-2 two. Five, two is a wild, so that's actually no pitch. We'll redo it again. 6-4, strikeout chance. That's a 1, so Hank Aaron is gone. 1 down. Here's Rico Cardi. 2-2. Two, two. Starline against the lefty, but Cardi's a righty, so that's a blank. Cardi gets the swing. 3-1. That's a star one, ground ball to short. So Marshall might be saying, oh, I'm, I'm putting these in the wrong spot, aren't I? Let me get my correction. Good thing I have that here. Mistakes are plenty, it seems. So I need to get my correction tape here. I don't know why I was writing these into the Giants section, but that was pretty weird. Okay, this strikeout in the ground out are here. So now he has faced 31 batters. So Cepeda said bat. He is now Marischal, Marischal is now tired, thanks to that at bat. He's faced 31 exactly. This is batter 32 coming up. So if he does hit these these rolls here with the parentheses, then he will be subject to that fatigue. Marischal 1-4. He just missed that. It's a range play though. Go to Cepeda, 3-6, fly to center. So it's a range check on Willie Mays, who's only a 2. 
and he can't get it. Is it going to be a double? It will not. It'll be a single. What, did you think there'd be a 1-2-3 inning in the 69 replay? I think not. So we keep going. Now, do you stick with Marshall? He's tired. It is a 4-1 to one game. I think you can at least give him one more batter. And they're going to let Cleet Boyer swing away. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Marshall, 2-2. Two, two. Would be a star line against a lefty, but it's a uh, blank for a righty. I was going to pinch it with a left-handed hitter. I'm glad I didn't do that. So here, Boyer gets a chance. 2-1, question mark 7. It's only up to a 4, though. But that's a 2. That's all he needs. That's a double. A double for Cleet Boyer. A double for Cleet Boyer to... The double goes to left field. And on a double to left, you lose one on your base running rating. So I don't know if they're going to try to send Cepeda or not. He's a 3. You lose one, makes him a 2. But they're 2 outs to get the 3 back. And then the left fielder's arm is a minus 2 Henderson. They're not going to send the runner. They're going to hold him up because his run doesn't mean anything. He's only have a chance of a 1 to score. So they're not going to even mess with that. But that's going to bring up the catcher, Didier. Switch hitting catcher. Don't know if they want to make a pinch hitting move or not. And actually the Giants may be looking to bring in Lindsey to try to finish this thing. Let's look at the... No, actually they're going to bring in Tony Gonzalez to pinch hit for Didier. Left-handed hitting Tony Gonzalez is going to come on and hit for Didier. Now the question is, do you stick with Marshall? who's tired, or do you go to the fresh Frank Lindsay and his 11 saves out of the bullpen to get that last out? You, he's gone eight and two-thirds. You kind of like to get Marshall that, that complete game. So runners at second and third. They're going to let Marshall keep going. They would take a chance he doesn't hit that fatigue chance. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Marshall to Gonzalez, 4-5. And that's a double question mark, which is a fatigue from what I understand because it's in the parentheses. That's been some questions. Do you make it an automatic out here? Uh, I mean, is this in parentheses just to, to, make sure, to make it look neater or is it actually a fatigue roll? And what happens if you hit that fatigue roll? Does it become a base hit automatically? That I'm not sure of. That I'm not sure how it plays. Let me double check the rules if I can find it. Let me see something here. Uh, let's see here. Split chance. Let me see something about... I'm going to find the part about fatigue on here. You know, I don't think the double question mark falls in that fatigue category. I mean, the yeah, the, I think that's... I think the fatigue roll is just this one here and that one here. This one, I believe, is just standard. Because you use... Even when it's already in print, you still go... You don't ignore that and you keep it. So it's, there's no fatigue there. I don't know what I was thinking of. There is no fatigue on the double question mark. That's just a regular roll. So that's a 10, which is out of range. So Gonzalez gets to swing away. Got confused there for a second, but now I'm straight. Gonzalez does get to swing away. Five, six. Ground ball to short. Game's over anyway. And Marishaw escapes with a 4-1 to one victory. They won the real game 2 to nothing. They win this one 4-1. to one. And for the poor Atlanta Braves... They now drop to five and a half back as they are now 80 and 69. And they drop to five and a half back. Atlanta, uh, San Francisco now 85 and 63. And then Cincinnati and LA in the, on the ticker are going to be playing a double header. So if LA sweeps Cincinnati, they could switch spots. But San Fran actually wants them to split and keep, that, uh, keep their distance. So we'll see how this turns out as I move on. So let's take a look here and see what we have for the ticker. As we bring on the ticker, and you can see here, uh, let's see, wait a minute, San Francisco won four to one. Alrighty, get the fast action cards in here. And as you can see, I printed the Cincinnati LA game there. I forgot they actually played a double header on this date. You look it up on 916, they actually played a doubleheader, so I'm going to have the second game as well. Maybe a split doubleheader, day night doubleheader. So I'll play the first game, then I'll just go in order, do the Cub game against Montreal, and then do the Cincy game. So we'll do it that way, I guess. Fact or play them, or sim them as they show up on the on the screen. Now the next game on the schedule, 917. 
didn't really, I mean, the Mets are off. Chicago plays Philadelphia. Uh, Pittsburgh, St. Louis will be decent. Houston, San Fran, Atlanta, L.A. Actually, the Mets do play Montreal. My bad. They play Montreal. So the top two teams, Chicago and Montreal, play the two lowest teams. Haven't played San Diego in the replay yet. So this is the chance to get San Diego in the replay. So I'm going to have them play in Cincinnati from uh, San Diego Stadium uh, in the next game. So it'll be San Diego's one time to be on the, on the replay. They're the only team that has not been on there. Philadelphia's been on there. Montreal's been on there. Houston. So the only team, only bad team that hasn't been on there is San Diego. So might as well give them their opportunity. So we shuffle. We flip them over and cut. And the first game is the first game of the doubleheader between Cincinnati and L.A. Cincinnati is a 4 through 7 or a 12. They get a 6, so they win it 2 to 1. Cincinnati wins the first game 2 to 1. And now we'll see what happens in the second game. But first, it's the Cubs in a big game against the Expos. 3 to 8. And the Cubs will get a victory. It is an 8. Cubs win it 9 to 5, Dolly Parton style. And now let's look at Cincinnati and L.A. for the second game. Four through seven or 12 will give Cincinnati a sweep of the doubleheader. It's a nine, so they split. This one's nine to two. Oops, nine to two L.A. So they split the doubleheader. So let's bring in the standings again. So with the doubleheader split, the Reds now are 82 and 65. And they fall to two and a half behind San Francisco. The Dodgers, with their split, go to 81 and 66, and they fall three and a half back of San Francisco. So, San Fran picked up a half game on the Giants. I'm sorry, on the Reds and the Dodgers, and picked up a full game on Atlanta. And let's check out San the Chicago with the win is now a 90 and 60, and they are only a half a game behind the Mets. Of course, the Mets are one game ahead in the loss column, which matters because the Mets will have other days where they play games and the Cubs don't. So, in fact, on the 19th, they play a doubleheader against Pittsburgh. So that's where they make up that game real quick. So that's where we're at right now. And so given all this, the next game, uh, Cincinnati and San Diego, it will be Cincinnati and San Diego. That's what I've got set aside. Just got to, I haven't printed the sheets yet, but I need to print those out. So, because I wasn't sure what, who, who I was going to play. So I'm not bound by this. I can always switch it. I haven't printed the games out or anything. Atlanta, L.A. is intriguing, but I've had a lot of Atlanta games here lately. So I thought it might be better to get somebody else differently in there. So I think this is the one chance to get San Diego in there, and I'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll do the ticker for the rest of the games. So Juan Marshall and Willie McCovey were the heroes in this one. McCovey, especially those two two-run homers. One in the fourth and one in the sixth. The second one in the sixth pretty much put the game away after Atlanta had cut the lead to two to one. That uh, two outs with nobody on, an error on the shortstop. Garrido opened the door, and McCovey came up next and closed that door very quickly with that two-run homer. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Inside Pitch 1969 National League pennant style. And I hope you enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And as usual, I will see you all down the road.